The WNBA season tips off on Friday, and we at Yahoo Sports are very excited because we have Hannah Withiam of Just Women's Sports with us to break down the season and some big storylines. We do want to start with Brittany Griner. She remains detained in Russia after Russian officials alleged she had vape cartridges containing hashish oil in her luggage at the airport in February. She was returning to UMMC Ekaterinburg, her Russian team, out of the international break. Her next court appearance is May 19th, when investigators can request more time to gather evidence or they can declare the case ready to bring formal charges against her. The State Department is in contact with her and has said it is working to bring her and other detained U.S. citizens home. Now, on the basketball-specific front, the Phoenix Mercury will have to deal with the season probably without her, at least for a large chunk of time. So they will rely heavily on Tina Charles, who they picked up in free agency. She's one of many faces in new places. Hannah, what is a big one for you? I am looking at um, Emma Mieseman. I've been really impressed with their two preseason performances for the Chicago Sky so far. She had a game high 24 in the first one. And I think she's obviously two seasons removed now from her WNBA Finals MVP performance with the Mystics. But I think coming into the Sky team, they're missing a few players right now through the preseason, but she should slot right in, I think, to the starting lineup and form a pretty potent duo with Candace Parker in the front court. There are a lot of veterans who are closer to the end of their careers than to the beginning. Who are you focused on watching this season? Because it could be their last. It, it's funny. Uh, Sylvia Fowles, I guess, is the only one who's officially said it's her last season. Diana Taurasi <laughs> with the comment last week saying she could she could expect herself to play for a while. So we'll yeah, see. Yeah, suddenly she's like, OK, let's go another five years. Right, right, um, which doesn't surprise me. I could see Diana playing for as long as she wants. But Sue Bird also hasn't officially said whether it's her last year, but I think I'd be surprised if it's not. She, she signed a one-year deal on a veteran minimum, which, first of all, is I think we need to pause on because the fact that she's playing on a $74,000 salary as one of the best players in the league is pretty stunning. But clearly she's going for one more run at a championship with the Storm. So this is just not only am I watching Sue Birds last season, but I think I'm watching this Storm team and whether they can put it together for one more championship with this core. Because you see Brianna Stewart signed a one-year deal as well. She took that visit with the Liberty and Free Agency and she's from Syracuse. I think a lot of people have rumored her to, yeah, shout out to Syracuse, that's right. I've rumored her to have interest in playing for the Liberty one day. So the fact she signed that one year deal is pretty, perhaps pretty telling. So we'll see if they can make one more run this year and, and complete that. I mean, I think you could call it a storm dynasty. This would be their, their third championship with that core. I'm really excited to see Sylvia Fowles in her final year. Um, I love the Sills final ride campaign. You and I were just in Minneapolis, so we got to see the love for Minnesota and women's basketball and the Lynx. I went to a bar um, down the street from Target Center and all of the guys were talking about the Lynx and Cheryl Reeve. And this is like the final player of their core to leave them, which I think for like kind of my age group, you think of the WNBA, you think of the Lynx. So it'll be a really emotional season to watch her leave. Yeah, it's gonna be, I mean, they could also make a run of the championship. So how about that story if Sylvia Fowles were able to pull that off in her last year? And she's still, she's still playing at a high. Fact about Sylvia Fowles, in case anyone does not know, she has a mortuary science degree. She wants to be a funeral home director, which I've always found super interesting. One of my favorite fun facts, it's fascinating. Right. So the flip side of veterans is we have a lot of rookies. Um, it is tough. For rookies to break onto rosters. We all know there's technically only 144 spots. There's less than that in reality. I like Emily Engsler, which is no surprise to anyone. Went to Syracuse for a few years. Um, if you saw the Fever hype video, they talked about behind the scenes at the draft. They talked about high motor players, which is definitely Emily. I don't think she's going to be a high points getter for them, um, but she'll do a little bit of everything. I like a gritty player. And I think, you know, depending on how other rookies do, she could sneak into rookie of the year talk. That's just my kind of take on her. But what are some others you're looking at? I think that's a great pick. And, and going off of that with the Fever, obviously such a young team, four first round draft picks. So we should see a lot of them getting playing time this year. So I'm looking at Melissa Smith for sure. I think you can only take so much from preseason, but 
she played a game high or team high 29 minutes in their preseason debut on Saturday. I think almost had a double double. Um, I just see her with the usage she's going to get this year, and she's just has a lot of those pro ready skills that should translate right away with her physicality, ability to to get to the rim, um, play defense. I, I think she's currently probably my front runner for rookie of the year based on all of those factors coming together. I'm also excited about Veronica Burton. I think she was a bit underrated entering the draft. She brings a lot of skills that the Wings lacked last year. She is known for her defense, distribution. The Wings were kind of splitting between Erika and Gumbawale, who should really not be a point guard, more of a shooting guard, and other players last year at the point. So I think Burton honestly might have a chance to start on the Wings. And then Kirsten Bell somehow fell to the aces. They were shocked yeah. that she fell in the first round and they snagged her. Um, I think she's a perfect fit for Becky Hammond's new fast, high volume offense based on what she, she came out of at Florida Gulf Coast. We are doing predictions here at Yahoo Sports and we have to rank the top eight teams. I got to like number seven and there were like three more teams that I wanted to include in my top eight. It is so difficult. Um, I like the Liberty. I think they can kind of sneak into contention. I think Sandy Brandello, way better coach than they've had recently. Um, Sabrina is healthy. Natasha Howard is hopefully healthy. They add Steph Dolson, who has a three by three gold and a WNBA championship with the sky. Uh, is there anyone that you really like that could sneak in there? You're absolutely right that it is such a competitive year. I think it's just as rosters get a little bit smaller, more talents coming in, it's going to be it's going to be an amazing season. Um, one team I'm looking at are the, are the Wings. They showed us last year that sort of a hot and cold team, but when they get hot, they can beat anyone. Um, they had some big wins against the Storm last year. I think they beat the Sky once. They have just so much talent, young talent. I think um, with Enrique Gumbawale coming back on that Supermax multi-year deal, she's ready to lead this team. You have Tierra McCown coming in from the Fever on that trade. Um, I think she is a high impact player, someone they they lacked in the paint with her size and, and playing off of Satu Sable, I think they're just going to be very dangerous down there. And again, Burton coming in, being able to distribute. Uh, Marina Mabry got really hot last year from range. So I think they have the pieces and now in their second year under coach Vicki Johnson, I think they could beat any of the top teams on any given night and sneak into the playoffs this year. So a few months from now, we will have the WNBA finals. Who is in your finals? Because I've had a tough time figuring this out. It's tough. I think I might be going the safe route here, picking the Chicago Sky and the Connecticut Sun meeting in the finals, but I just have a hard time seeing anyone beating them with the talent they have and the experience they bring. The Sky obviously winning last year, the Sun being in it in 2019. They, the Sun are bringing back their core and they're finally healthy. Alyssa Thomas, well, as, as I think you mentioned, healthy to her standards because she has- Healthy-ish. Yeah, healthy-ish, which is always the case with her, with her two torn labrums on her shoulders. But um, they are going to make a run for it with with John Cole Jones reigning MVP. Brianna Jones, I think, is one of my favorite players in the league right now. She's just, she does it really quietly, but all of a sudden she's one of those players, second half hits and she's already, she already has a double-double and it's like you didn't even realize. Um, Courtney Williams obviously, obviously returning. So I think they make a run at it. I am choosing the sky over the sun, ultimately. I like, I think their roster is just loaded. Um, they had that experience of winning last year. The sun had yet to get over the hump. The, the Suns cap space concerns me a little bit. They're making cuts this year. Um, they had the fewest bench points in the league last year. So they really relied heavily on their starters. Um, so I think them getting all the way depends on health and just mm -hmm. whether they can stay consistent. So I think the sky just with a little bit more depth, those players having the experience of winning a championship, Emma Mieseman joining that core, I, I see them taking it again. I like those picks. I completely agree with you, but I'm going to flip it and say that the Sun win because they've had so much trouble winning recently. Um, like you said, Alyssa Thomas, finally healthy-ish. Um, I think adding her into the mix kind of right before the playoffs last year was tough. Uh, Courtney Williams obviously brings some scoring threat like on the outside and, and at guard play. I also think her trash talk, though, is 
helpful in a way. She brings like that swagger, that audacity to Connecticut, um, just to be different. I went with the Seattle Storm in the finals. I could not fully tell you why, um, but you know, Brianna Stewart and Sue Bird, it is hard to beat them together, especially a healthy Brianna Stewart. And after her surgery, we might see her back to kind of full health, whereas she wasn't at the end of last year. But like we've said, like throughout this entire this entire little chat here, it's so deep. It's going to be really tough to get to the finals. I wouldn't be surprised if we have, you know, another five versus six or lower seed like that. It's such a good point. And uh, Gabby Williams, who I know you've talked about, um, I think she could be an X factor for the Storm. So I think the Storm have as good a chance as anyone. And, and yeah, competitive year. So these could be we could be proven wrong very quickly Anna, we would love to have you back we love just women's sports here at yahoo sports and for everyone watching the WNBA, the season tips off friday at night and continues throughout the weekend so thank you for being here thank you so much for having me this was a blast